Foreign Minister Wang Yi of China will make some remarks about the meeting just closed. And after that, he will take a couple of questions. So first of all, Minister Wang Yi. I will speak Chinese. Whenever there is fighting or suffering on our planet, the world will look here at the UN. The recent Palestinian-Israeli conflict has caused enormous civilian casualties and a serious humanitarian disaster. The international community expects the Council to live up to its due responsibilities and take strong actions. Holding the November presidency of the Security Council, China has always taken the Palestinian-Israeli conflict as the most pressing issue. After the Resolution 2712 was adopted, which is the first resolution adopted by the Council since the outbreak of the conflict under China's presidency, we have initiated today's high-level meeting in response to the strong call of the international community. Foreign ministers and high-level representatives from about 20 countries participated in this meeting, and I would like to express my appreciation to all of them. At the meeting, the participants had in-depth discussions on the current Palestinian-Israeli situation and the next steps. The parties further built consensus and pulled strengths for the restoration of peace. We welcome the humanitarian pause reached last week, but peace cannot be circumscribed and there shouldn't be a time limit to a ceasefire. The window of opportunity once opened should not be closed again. The fighting once stopped should not flare up again. We cannot allow the humanitarian disaster to continue or tolerate even more sufferings or losses among the civilians. We urge the removal of the release of all those held captive and call for the removal of the blockade of Gaza to ensure unhindered international corridors and guarantee the basic needs of civilians in Gaza. We should also prevent the conflict from spilling over into the entire Middle East region and urge countries with influence on parties to the conflict to play a positive role. The Palestinian-Israeli conflict proves once again that a two-state solution is the only viable way to address the Palestinian question. More than 70 years have gone by and generations of Palestinians have lost their homes and become displaced. Yet the dream of establishing an independent state of Palestine remains exclusive, remains elusive, and this is an open wound on human conscience. The international community needs to fully implement the relevant resolutions of the UN General Assembly and the Security Council fully respect the will of the Palestinian people, return to the right track of the two-state solution, and enable the building of an independent state of Palestine as quickly as possible. That is the only way for Palestine and Israel to coexist in peace, for Arabs and Jews to live in harmony, and for the Middle East region to, endure, to, in, uh, to enjoy durable peace. When it comes to the question of Palestine, China always stands on the side of peace, on the side of justice, and on the side of conscience. President Xi Jinping has outlined China's principled position on the current Palestinian-Israeli situation on multiple occasions. With that as the basis, we have submitted China's position paper on resolving the Palestinian-Israeli conflict and offered five Proposals, including implementing a comprehensive ceasefire, effectively protecting the civilians, ensuring humanitarian assistance, enhancing diplomatic mediation, and implementing the two-state solution. Just now, I announced at the meeting that to ease the humanitarian situation in the Gaza Strip, China will send another batch of emergency humanitarian assistance to the Gaza Strip.
Over the past few weeks, the international community has taken active actions. The Arab and Islamic countries have been vigorously exercising their good offices, and the BRICS countries have also sent a strong message. China will continue to step up com communication and coordination and build consensus with the relevant parties and work tirelessly to bring stability back to the region and tranquility back to the people. Thank you. Now the floor is open for questions. Uh, first for China Central Television. Yes, rounds of Palestinian-Israeli conflicts have caused enormous casualties and humanitarian disasters. What are China's proposals for preventing another Palestinian-Israeli conflict from breaking out and for fundamentally resolving the Palestinian question? The two-state solution is the only way to fundamentally resolve the Palestinian question. What is lacking for the settlement of the Palestinian question is not grand plans or slogans, but the courage and the actions needed to stand up for justice. The two-state solution is the bottom line for international justice. There is no stepping back from that. The independent uh, the establishment of an independent state is the undeniable national right of the Palestinian people, which cannot be traded away. In the face of the historical injustice long suffered by the Palestinian people, no one has an excuse to drag their feet, and there is no justification for inaction. When it comes to the issues bearing on the future of the Palestinian people, no country has a veto right. The Palestinian question is the core of the Middle East issue, and it must be prioritized, not marginalized, on the international agenda. Only when the two-state solution is fully implemented can the Middle East enjoy genuine peace and Israel enjoy lasting security. China calls for the convening of a more broad-based, authoritative, and more effective international peace conference to further build consensus for peace and work out a concrete timetable and roadmap to push for a comprehensive, just, and lasting solution to the Palestinian question. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Michelle Nichols from Reuters. Um, could you elaborate for us a little bit on exactly what the humanitarian aid is that China will be delivering and what's the sort of total uh, value, I guess, of the aid that you've given so far to Gaza? Um, and then you mentioned also in the Council um, uh, the possibility of spillover of this conflict. Uh, when your president met with the US president recently in San Francisco, President Biden asked your president if he could speak with Iran to um, convince them to stop any provocative actions that might add fuel to the fire, so to speak. What conversations has China had with Iran since then on that, on that note? Well, China's assistance has arrived at the Rafah crossing, but because of um, hindered and uh, not very smooth access, now the assistance and aid remain at the Rafah crossing without being able to get into Gaza. So we are calling for unhindered humanitarian access into the Gaza Strip so that the nearly two million people in Gaza will be able to survive and uh, live their lives. And that is the most, uh, most basic needs of civilians in Gaza. The deprivation of water, electricity, and medicine should not continue in today's world in the 21st century. Today, we have announced that China will send a new batch of assistance to the Gaza Strip and that will be delivered to the Gaza Strip as quickly as possible. Uh, we hope there could be unhindered humanitarian access so that the assistance can get into the hands of the people in Gaza as quickly as possible. Well, at today's high-level meeting, the strongest call and the most unanimous view is for there to be unhindered humanitarian access into Gaza, for assistance to be delivered more faster and more quickly into Gaza, and for there to be new openings of crossings 
into Gaza so that the humanitarian assistance uh, will be able to deliver into the region and reach the nearly 2 million civilian population in Gaza to meet their most basic needs. Well, President Xi has had uh, related discussions about how to address the Palestinian-Israeli conflict and how to resolve the Palestinian question, which is at the heart of the Middle East issue with not just President Biden, but with many other state leaders. Uh, recently, the BRICS has held an extraordinary summit on the Middle East situation with a particular emphasis on Gaza and President Raisi of Iran as the new uh, BRICS member also participated in that extraordinary summit. The consensus reached at that summit is to call for a comprehensive ceasefire, ensure unhindered humanitarian access, and return to the two-state solution. And it is along that direction China will continue to play its constructive role. Thank you. Last question. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Foreign Minister, for doing this. My name is Susan Tehrani from WEON. Um, I was wondering, uh, why is it so hard, in your opinion, for the Security Council, as a permanent member, to condemn Hamas? And since you're here, we're very concerned about the pneumonia cases in China. Are you concerned about opening up the country to foreigners without visa regarding this? And thank you. Well, it is first and foremost up to the people in Palestine to decide how to view Hamas. China always stands firmly against all forms of terrorism. In the meantime, we emphasize that there should be no double standards when it comes to opposing terrorism, and such opposition of terrorism should not be targeted against any particular ethnic group or religion. Well, China has a fully-fledged medical system. Uh, recently, we have seen some clusters of flu cases among children in certain parts of China. In fact, that is a very common phenomenon in many countries, and in China, that has been put under effective control. China's interactions with the international community will not be affected by any factors, and we welcome uh, more visits from friends from across the world, including you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very quick one. Very quick one. Uh, will, China, will China push to condemn Hamas for the 7 October attack on the draft resolution?